I, I, I might as well go first then. So I, I'm, uh, I'm Nick Bass. I'm an academic psychiatrist in the Division of Psychiatry at UCL, and I'm director of the Mental Health Pathway of the UCL Dementia MSc. Um, and, and clinically, I'm an old age psychiatrist and I work in, in a memory clinic in, in Tower Hamlets, East London. Thanks, Nick. I'm Jen Augustus. I'm a cognitive neuroscientist at the Queensway Institute of Neurology, and I co-direct the uh, Dementia Neuroscience Programme with Professor Jason Warren, um, and my research is on audiovisual processing in different rare forms of dementia. So welcome, everyone, to our webinar today. Um, and we've got a lot of student panellists so that you can hear from current students and alumni about their experiences on the programme. But maybe if I hand over to Nick for a brief introduction about the programmes, is that OK, Nick? And Anna, if you could put the slides up. Yeah, so what we thought would be useful is for us to give a, a little bit of a brief sort of rundown of the of the course and then then we'll very much hand it over to um, current and ex-students to to talk about their experience of the course and to uh, and then at the end we can all answer questions. Um, so, can I check? You can see the slides, okay, Nicholas? Yep, that's great. Great. Okay. You. So, I, I actually, can move on to the to the next slide. Sorry, a few technical problems, hang on. Oh, that's all right, I can, I can start talking. The, uh, so uh, as I'm sure uh, many of you will be aware that dementia is a, a global health challenge for, for everyone. And uh, UCL actually has a, a, um, a world leading dementia research portfolio uh, spanning the entire range of research from, from basic, uh, basic genetics right to complicated uh, multimodal interventions for, for patients and for carers. Um, and in, in 2016, uh, UCL became the UK Dementia Research uh, Hub for the, for the uh, Research Institute, the UK D Dementia Research Institute. Um, so there's a lot of dementia research activity at UCL. And in fact, it's, a, it's spread all across the university, but it's, it's particularly concentrated in the Institute of Neurology and the Division of Psychiatry. Um, and so the, the Dementia MSc was conceived as a sort of a holistic approach to the advanced study of dementia, again, from, from basic neuroscience right to complex interventions. Um, with the idea of, of increasing the expertise in, in dementia uh, and, and research capacity, and so in some way going to address the, this global challenge. Um, so the, the Dementia MSc is, is offered jointly by the Institute of Neurology in the Faculty of Brain Sciences and the uh, Division of Psychiatry, which is also in the Faculty of Brain Sciences. Uh, but with it, within the Dementia MSc, you choose one of two pathways, the mental health pathway, or, or the uh, neuroscience pathway. Um, just quickly talking about the structure of the course. Um, so for both pathways, you can study full-time one year or part-time two years. For the uh, mental health pathway, there's also a flexible option where, where you can study up to, up to five years. Like all UCL MSCs, it's modular, so um, there, are, there are compulsory and optional modules. The compulsory modules are, um, uh, are based within um, the Division of Psychiatry and the Institute of Neurology. And then there's a great range of optional modules to choose from. Most people choose them from within um, either uh, the DOP or the ION, um, but it is possible to choose modules from a wide range of divisions and institutes across UCL if it makes sense for your, you know, your, your mode of study and your timetable and your, your aspirations. So I think we can go to the next slide, please. So just say a little bit more uh, detail about the, the mental health pathway. As, as you can see, they are, um, you know, the idea is that they're, they're overlapping pathways and, and people are exposed to different, different types of research, but the mental health pathway is um, based in the Division of Psychiatry. Uh, um, which is a major contributor to 
um, research in dementia in the areas of prevention, psychological therapies uh, and uh, end of life care. And people may be aware of the um, Lancet Commission on Dementia, which has been very in influ influential, um, which was led by uh, Dior Livingston, who's one of the professors in the um, department division. Um, so I think we, we, you know, we have similar aims overall on the two pathways, but basically to um, expose people to cutting edge uh, research into causes, present, uh, prevention and detection and management of dementias, and to train people in a re range of uh, relevant research methodologies, particularly epidemiological, psychological and clin clinical trial approaches. Um, and so uh, for the mental health pathway, we have some, um, uh, some compulsory modules, so it's the advanced treatments in dementia, um, current research in dementia, which I co-lead with uh, Nicola White, uh, and then core principles in mental health research, which is really uh, um, looks at a methodology which is applicable across mental health research, um, and it's a good foundation, a good sort of science, basic science foundation. And the, the, the teaching is mainly from academics within the division. Um, so we have a, a strong uh, unit in dementia, um, professors Jill Livingston, Susanna Walker, uh, Rob Howard, and Susanna, Susanna Reeves to mention uh, just a few. Um, and then there is uh, and also a compulsory module, uh, which, which is taken in the Institute of Neurology, the Clinical Neuroscience of Dementia module. And then there's a, a wide range of optional modules. I'm not, I won't list them all, um, but things like practical neuroscience, um, uh, mental health, uh, mental health in a social and global context, uh, psychosis. So you can really mix and match and, 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 and choose the modules according to your interests and, and uh, objectives. And um, the Division of Psychiatry runs a number of MSc courses, um, one which is the clinical mental health sciences, which is very big, and, and we share a lot of the kind of support and structures with them. Um, and, and so you're very much uh, part of a smaller group within a, in a, larger, a, a larger cohort of MSc students and will take part in study groups and journal clubs and sort of generic work, um, workshops. And we also have a, a personal tutoring system and a, and a clinical placement opportunities um, as well. Um, so finally, for me, I, I mean, who should apply? Well, we have people from a wide range of back academic um, and personal backgrounds, as you'll, you'll find out. Um, so, it, you know, it's suitable for people coming out of undergraduate degrees in psychology, et cetera, but not, not restricted to that. But also, historically, we've had a number of people from different professions working in the area of dementia, um, occupational therapists, um, nurses, uh, doctors do, doing psychiatry. Um, so it's, it, it's, it's applicable for a wide range of backgrounds. Uh, and I, I think, you know, it's, if you're practicing, if you're a clinician, it, it helps in your knowledge and expertise in the, in the area of dementia, um, but also um, people with, have gone into, to, into research uh, from having done the MSc. In fact, many people have, and, and um, one person will be talking about that later. So that, I'll, I'll stop there and hand over to Jen, thanks. Thanks, Nick. Can we have the next slide, please? So as I said, I co-direct the programme with oh. Professor Jason Warren over at the Queen Square Institute of Neurology, which is where the Neuroscience Pathway is housed, and is home to the Dementia Research Institute, Queen Square Brain Bank and Dementia Research Centre, to name a few of um, the UK and in, in even a worldwide leading a research centres for dementia. And you'll hear as part of the programme from the professors and the principal investigators, the cutting edge of their research, their latest findings as part of your, uh, research, your core teaching modules. And you also have the unique opportunity that many of our clinicians work at the National Hospital for Neurology and Neurosurgery on the other side of Queen Square. So you'll have opportunities for patient-led teaching. You'll hear about case studies, so applying the knowledge that you've learned and hearing about um, the cases that her, our clinicians are, are working with and also our rare dementia support um, groups um, help us 
give opportunities for you to meet people who are living with dementia, with rare dementias. So Oliver, I, I know who's on the call today, he's been attending some of those uh, where you get to speak with not only people living with dementia, but their families and understand the true impact that a, a dementia diagnosis has on the, the on the family as a whole as well. So we kind of um, tag this program as from bench to bedside. And next slide, please. So you'll be learning everything from the molecular um, underpinnings of the um, different dementias, um, biomarkers, neuropsychology, neuroimaging, everything through to diagnostic criteria, symptoms and, and kind of treatment management. So as Nick mentioned, we share two core modules with the neuroscience pathway, which is clinical neuroscience of dementia, current research of dementia, which is in term one. Uh, and these give you a really uh, great foundation. And then um, our students also take practical neuroscience of dementia, so applying that knowledge to a more um, clinic, um, clinical setting, as well as higher functions of the brain and our research and methodology um, units as well. Like with the other pathway, you can tailor this program to what you need. So it's all about making your MSc work for you and um, choosing optional modules that um, meet your interests, but also your career trajectory. What do you want to do next and how can you best set that up? So as Nick said, many of our students take optional modules within our own department, whether that's I don't know, um, genetic, um, advanced genetic technologies, maybe motor systems and neuro um, rehabilitation, to name a few. Um, also, um, with Nick's um, department, um, well, I know that um, Oliver on the call has um, taken advanced treatment management of dementia, um, and there's also neuroscience and mental health, which are popular, as well as wider um, modules across um, the life sciences. Often, um, most students are attracted to the master's pro uh, projects. Um, Oh, sorry, the programs by the project. So it's to give you an opportunity to take part in real research. These are projects where you're embedded with groups at the Institute of Neurology. You're, you'll find out about what the latest work is and also you'll get to contribute to it. And we have our symposia, which culminates in our students sharing the work that they've done and you present your work to each other. So it's a real opportunity right from the beginning of your degree when you're taking part in journal clubs with early careers researchers through to you producing some work and presenting it to the ION research community. So you get to share in and, and, the, and be part of tackling this global um, crisis um, and the dementia challenge that we're all working towards. Um, next slide, please. So like with Nick, we have um, a range of students that come to us, a, a lot from biology and neuroscience backgrounds. Um, about a third come from psychology and cognitive sciences, and then our health professionals, where we've had a speech and language therapists, doctors, and we've also had um, pharmacists that um, join the programme and then take the work back to clinical practice. And many of our students go on to do PhDs, and um, Katie is on the call today, who's a second year PhD student, um, and Tiffany, who is in the final year of her PhD as well, um, from the mental health pathway. And um, some of our students have gone on to do clinical psychology and postgraduate medicine, medicine so inspired by the uh, medical aspect of our programmes, as well as many that enter into scientific research, whether as research assistants or into industry and bio startup companies and some of our students go on to consultancy and charity work. So really these programmes are designed to bring together a lot of like-minded people from a lot of different backgrounds. So if you're up for a challenge, um, if, you're, if you want to broaden your horizons and maybe be put out of your comfort zone to understand dementia from many different angles, maybe you haven't thought of before, then these programmes are for you. Um, Nick and I are happy to answer any questions after today's session, if anything. But for now, we'll kind of pass on to our students. One thing I'd like to mention is there are if you are thinking of taking on a, a master's and you're not sure about funding, there are some funding opportunities. Um, can I have the next slide? So the application deadline currently is the 31st of March to apply to do a master's. And we have um, scholarships for US students, um, which is a $20,000 um, studentship uh, applicable to both pathways. Um, students applying to the mental health pathway have um, division of psychiatry um, scholarships available to them, as well as those for clinical staff 
and for um, trust staff. So have a look um, if there's uh, any funding that might help you. And also in within um, the Institute of Neurology for those applying to the neuroscience pathway, there's the BAME scholarships for home students and international scholarships as well for overseas students. So have a look and see if they apply to you. Um, so thank you, that's the presentation for now. Um, and definitely have a look at those web addresses. We can put them in the chat maybe um, for you to have a look at, or just Google um, scholarships and dementia MSC and they should all pop up. So now to get onto the meat of today's uh, meeting, um, which is the most important part and that's to hear from some of our students. Um, so welcome and thank you all for joining us. We've got a mixture of students. So we've got three current students. Um, and so maybe if we go around our current students and you could maybe introduce yourself and which program or which pathway you're on sorry and we're on the um and then maybe why you chose to do a master's and um, so charlotte you're in your first year would you like to introduce yourself hi there yeah my name's charlotte i'm on the mental health pathway um i'm studying part-time so i'll study over two years and i'm sort of part way through my first year um that i i graduated in psychology a very long time ago and then I worked in uh, technology consulting for 15, 18 years, um, left to concentrate on my family and the last five years I've been working um, with older age charities and uh, more recently in dementia daycare centres. Um, so I really appreciate the flexibility and the last year it has been a complete whirlwind and it's been brilliant but it is a, a lot to, to manage, but it is definitely workable um, because of the part-time element. Um, in working in the Dementia Day Centres, I just loved it so much and really enjoyed the challenge and decided that I needed to try and learn as much as I possibly could. So found a, an online course with the Dementia Research Institute between Queen Square and UCL, which then led me on to this webinar last year, actually. Um, and it all kind of sounds like it was brilliant, brilliantly curated, but actually it's just snowballed one thing after the other. I put in an application thinking I wouldn't get it and I did. And um, it's been just the most brilliant, I don't know, what is it, seven, nine months. Um, I've been blown away by the lecturers. They are really genuinely doing cutting edge research that's helping um, people live with, that are living with dementia now. And that's been really inspiring. Um, and my learning curve has been like that. It's been really brilliant from that perspective as well. Um, Nick mentioned earlier the core principles in mental health um, research, which, you know, I didn't know anything about mental health research before I came into this. So that has been, as he said, like a really great foundation for me um, because it's given me, I've just learned so much. And then laying on top of that, all of the dementia modules um, and the clinical mental health module, it's been really, really interesting. And yeah, I'm just loving it. I couldn't, I genuinely couldn't recommend it enough. So also on the same program as you, but on the second year is Bronte. Bronte, how how have you um, how have you found the program, or what drove you to apply? Yeah, hi, I'm Bronte. Um, I chose to apply for the pro. I am on the mental health pathway as well. I did a flexible masters, which allowed me to do it um, alongside working at the same time. So I'm on my second year. Um, I chose to apply because I have a background in working with care homes and with people with dementia I don't actually have a psychology or a clinical background so I definitely like Charlotte didn't think I would get the uh, master's so I was overjoyed when I actually got the um, opportunity to take it on um, I wanted to take it because it would give me more opportunity to develop more in a research avenue uh, expose myself to more uh, research skills like I developed so much from the core principles module um, as Charlotte said um, and it was a great way for me to break in. And I knew that I also wanted to start working in the third sector um, with the Alzheimer's Society. So it worked, it's been working alongside that for the last two years. Um, so it's been an amazing sort of complementary um, development progress alongside my job. Because um, I work in the research evidence team at the Alzheimer's Society, it gives me the opportunity to be able to have a foot into the, the current research in dementia, have 
conversations with research uh, dementia researchers who are doing amazing work which all supports my everyday role so it's been amazing in that respect um yeah it's been a massive learning curve i would say um i think it's really i've really really appreciated the openness and interaction i've been able to have with the module tutors uh, being able to just have informal conversations um particularly i would say when you're working on assignments to be able to speak to them and learn about for example <laughs> what they would recommend you working on <coughs> sorry um and then i'm sorry i've just lost my voice from that cough <laughs> Um, but yeah, then I would say also, um, just gonna have a drink of water, sorry. I've been talking quite a lot this morning, <laughs> sorry. Uh, and then I would also say the dissertation is really useful as well, because I know for a fact that I'm going to be able to work on a dissertation with someone who can I, I can then work in care homes with my parents uh, as that sort of dissertation project. So yeah, I've got a lot out of the module and I would definitely recommend anyone to apply for it if they are looking to develop research skills and also complement what they're doing in their professional work as well. Thank you so much. So Oliver's on the neuroscience and pathway and maybe you can sum up your background, Oliver, maybe what you've enjoyed so far this year. Yeah, hi, so I'm Oli. Um, I'm doing the neuroscience pathway. Um, so my background is I, I've been working as a doctor for five years um, and I kind of was sick of the whole COVID situation and wanted to take a, a step away from the hospitals and do something productive. And I'm hoping to do geriatrics in the future. And I just thought this program looked perfect. Um, so, so yeah, so I, I'd say what I've enjoyed is, is essentially what Jen has already said, just the ability to study dementia from its kind of basic science all the way through to looking at case studies and how they are um, manifested and um, and then also getting the kind of interaction with the patients, looking at rare dementias, um, which has been really unique opportunity to, to actually speak to patients who are suffering with these rare dementias and their families and seeing how it affects them at a more personal level. Um, so yeah, you just get a really broad perspective, but also kind of really delve in deep into things that you're interested in. And yeah, I would, I would just highly recommend it if you have an interest in dementia. Thanks. So um, we've also got some alumni joining us and I'm going to... Um, grab Morgan at the moment. I think she's having internet issues. So while she's still here, Morgan started with a, a psychology background and after a master's has taken it onto a, um, a clinical post. So Morgan, do you want to say how the master's maybe directed you and what you're doing now? Uh, yeah, sorry, loads of technical issues, um, but I got there eventually. Um, yeah, so I did my undergraduate degree in psychology and neuroscience. So I did joint honours. And then I did the master's because I've always been most interested in dementia um, and the kind of neuro, I did the neuroscience pathway. Um, but I knew that I still wanted to go into kind of clinical psychology um, and I'm mostly interested in neuropsychology. And I think that this master's degree gives you a really good background in that field. Um, and it does actually give you a lot of clinical skills. So I kind of took those skills I'd learned and my background in neuropsychology and I um, started working as an assistant psychologist. So I'm now an assistant psychologist in the neuropsychology department at Queen Square. So I've not left, I'm still here. Um, so I'm in the hospital, the National Hospital, um, working neuropsychology. So yeah, it was kind of like, I think it's a pathway that, you know, not loads of people have done in the past, but it was a very easy transition to make. So yeah, I'm now in like a kind of junior clinical role. Um, and then the next step for me, probably years down the line is um, the doctorate in clinical psychology, hopefully. Thanks, Morgan. And another alumni for my program is Katie. And Katie's chosen to study for a PhD. So maybe you could just tell us your background before you started the master's and then how that helped you to get to where you are now. Hi, everyone. I hope you can hear me. OK. Can you hear me? Yeah, good. Um, yeah, I have, uh, I come from a basic science background. So um, I did my undergraduate degree in biochemistry, um, but it was really then, uh, I, I kind of wasn't sure where I wanted to go from there. Um, and I, I thought it might be more clinical. Um, so I went and, and worked in a, a care home for people specifically with dementia, um, which wasn't actually my intention, um, but uh, ended up there. And it was through kind of seeing the, the people living with dementia 
um, which inspired me then to apply for the master's in dementia. Um, and again, I wasn't really sure exactly um, where I would go from there. Um, and I was working as well at the time. Uh, so I decided to do, um, I think as, as Charlotte was saying, the two year part time program, which enabled me to um, work while I was studying and also um, gave me a really good opportunity to split uh, split things up a little bit. So I was able to do my modules in the first year and my project, my research project in the second year, which not only gave me time to kind of um, really immerse myself in the modules in the first year, but also delve really deeply into my research project in the second year. Um, and in that project, I worked in a, a wet lab at the Institute of Neurology, which is where I am now, uh, actually in the same lab that I'm in now. Um, and um, yeah, I just found it really, um, really inspiring um, and a really good opportunity um, to kind of see what the day to day uh, of lab life was and enabled me to connect in a way that I hadn't before. I, my background was basic science. Um, but for me then, there wasn't a real kind of drive or motivation to research. Um, I didn't really feel connected to what I was researching, whereas now I feel that the work I'm doing is the kind of work I enjoy doing, but also, um, you know, I'm close to the hospital and the patients and I can really see the benefit of it. Um, so, yeah, the Masters gave me a really good opportunity to kind of come into contact with um, with really inspiring lecturers and um, and my now supervisor um, and to kind of um, also gave me the confidence to apply for a PhD because I don't think that I would have thought it was something that I could have uh, applied to do before so yeah. Thanks Katie so as Nick mentioned there's a really a wide ranging um, research community at UCL every end of the spectrum so Katie is is it petri dishes, Katie? I don't know, cellular end of things. And right the way through to Tiffany, you've been researching um, about equality in dementia care. So as a final year PhD student, maybe you can tell us how the master's helped you. Sure. Hi, everyone. Um, so I did the master's because I wanted to do a PhD. So before that, I was working um, as a support worker for people with dementia um, in the Alzheimer's Society and really wanted to, I really enjoyed working with people and helping people, but wanted to be able to do that at a, a kind of higher level so that it could trickle down and benefit more people. So I did the master's to do the PhD. I'm nearly at the end of it now. Um, I did the mental health pathway. And one of the modules I chose was the mental health in global and social context, which I was already interested in, but that kind of, um, kind of helped inform what I wanted to do in my PhD. So it's it's quite global. I'm looking at dementia guidelines from all around the world, seeing if they consider minority characteristics like ethnicity um, and sort of gender and, and sexual orientation. Um, and I, I've been able to, I've been really lucky to, um, I'm now working with a research team in Jamaica. So my work has really become quite global um, and I'm hoping that post PhD, well, basically hoping that I'll be moving to San Francisco in September to do a postdoctoral um, program with something called the Global Brain Health Institute. So, yeah, without doing their masters, there's no way I'd be where I am now. Um, I did it full time. It was hard, but it was really enjoyable and manageable. And I, yeah, I really loved every second of it. Thanks, Tiffany. I think I think that's one thing that most of us students mention is that it is hard work and that you've got a lot of learning to do but at the end of it it's really worth the effort so Nick maybe I'll hand over to you for the next part. Well um, thank you everyone for sort of drawing a, a vivid picture of your experiences on the MSc and, and explaining about your, your backgrounds. Um, I mean we, we sort of had got quite a few more questions but actually um, everyone's talked quite a bit about their experience. So I wonder whether it's a good opportunity to open it to um, the audience, the floor, to, to ask some questions. Um, Rosie, have you got any questions in there? Uh, no, if anybody would like to ask questions, please submit them in the Q&A chat now. 
perhaps it, as we wait for questions, would anyone want, want, like to say a little bit about the kind of day-to-day -day, um, study, what, what, it's, what it's like, what, you know, what the format is and that sort of thing? Um, I'll happily, one thing that I was surprised about, which I, I'm not sure how much pre-COVID everything was online, but um, the course is hugely flexible. Um, some of the lectures are all online um, and they're all on Zoom. Some of them are a mix. You can go in and physically be face to face for the lecture or do it from home. And every, for all of the modules that are face to face, it's all recorded. So that's a huge huge development for me because it just means that if something comes up and I can't get there you know you can still catch up on all the work um so there's no more boring people's notes um which is great uh so that's been it is just so flexible and um you know the technology is just brilliant I love it <laughs> I said this year has been more flexible than most years and UCL is um trying its best to get back to face-to-face -face teaching um, as much as possible and we've been doing as much as we can this year but um, at the Institute of Neurology we always recorded um, but it, it wasn't a priority but it was an option for people so I think that may be here to stay Nick um, um, but going back we do want to have uh, our face-to-face -face interactions as we really enjoy meeting students in the lecture theatre and getting a real interactive learning experience. Yes, we have I mean, a first think... question. Uh, it's just advice on writing a personal statement to apply for the programme. Um, they're just asking, is it different to writing one for undergraduate study? I, I don't think it's, it's, it's different. Obviously, you've got different experiences. Um, with ours, we look at um, why, what's driving you? What's the reason you want to come on to this programme? What can you bring to the programme? What you want to get out from the programme? It's always nice to read when uh, students maybe had a thought about what optional modules they might want to do or they understand where the programme's going to take them. Um, so it's always good to sh show that you've got a bit of knowledge about the programme as well. Um, and whenever you, you're making a statement about yourself, I'd always give a bit of evidence. So an example, so if you're going to say I'm a brilliant uh, orator, then what have you presented? What have you shown? Those kind of things. But um, we definitely read your, um, your personal statements and they do make a difference. So it's good to work on them. Um, and it also shows us your writing skills. So it's nice to also get that um, experience of you and, and get an impression of your personality as well. So, Nick, did you have any um, suggestions about personal statements? No, I, I, I'll, follow, I'll follow your advice on personal statements. Anyone who was applying for the programme, any of the students, do you have any tips on writing personal statements for the masters? As you all were successful. I think I just tried to kind of show my passion for the course and why I wanted to do it. You know, it wasn't just any other application for me. This was the one course that I kind of picked out from like my first year of my undergrad because I kind of knew what I wanted to do quite early. So I tried to show mostly like why I was so determined that this was the right course for me and then put a lot of my work experience in there, but not just kind of listing it. Like I didn't just list my experience, kind of list what I learned from it instead. Um, and was quite reflective so I think that might have might have helped I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> Jen I think, you can tell me <laughs> I think also like if you don't have to throw everything at it and it's a or just in science in general or even in your lectures cramming every bit of information actually clouds the bigger picture so focus on the the important parts I mean Bronte and Charlotte you both seem surprised that you got on the program so um that you might have had an appropriate background or your the the study that you've done before would one of you two like to speak to that maybe yeah sure I, I think it's important that it's not a tick box thing it's not like the you're looking specifically for you need x y and z to get this it feels more as though if you're showing sort of an intent and the reason why you think this master's would help with your long-term career plans as if as if Morgan just said there then that's something that the they're really interested in reading about um, so making sure that you really dive into your reasoning behind it and then, like I are saying, exploring what it is that you think you can bring from your previous experience and why, and why you can tell that you've really thought about the master's being helpful for you. So, yeah. 
And um, thanks, Bronte. So there's a question I've seen that's for neuroscience. It asks, is there a, any preparation for the course? What can they do ahead of time for the Dementia Neuroscience M programme? They're currently in neuroscience undergrad. So maybe I'll ask Katie, did you do anything to prefer, prepare for the programme? She come from biological background. Um, I think there are a couple of, there was a, a reading list I was able to access beforehand. Um, and I got the, there was a, a Queen Square Institute, the Queen Square Institute Neurology textbook, which I found really useful. To be honest, um, I didn't, I spent a bit of time looking at the brain specifically, just in, in the run up to it. But that was really more just to kind of get me in the, when I started the program, there was, it covered a lot of bases in the sense it kind of assumes everyone's coming from a different background anyway. So um, I don't think you have to worry too much about um, not kind of already knowing things before you start. Um, but maybe just some reading to get into kind of the the um, kind of into the flow of it. Um, really, yeah. I spent some time looking at uh, stuff to do with the brain because that really wasn't my background at all. Um, and I knew I was going into the neuroscience stream. Um, but yeah, apart from that, I think um, there's a reading list, kind of checking that out. Um, and yeah, just kind of keeping up with what's happening in science and dementia at the moment as well. Um, yeah, that's all else. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Kate. Yes, yeah, so and no one's expected to have done anything before they join, but we always say the transition is a bit smoother if you have a think about what your weaknesses might be. So um, I'm particularly someone from a neuroscience background, including myself. Um, sometimes it's you sort of starting to embed yourself in clinical words and te terminologies. Morgan, I don't know if you want to come in on anything so you're not in yeah because I came in on a kind of psychology and neuroscience background so I was kind of lucky that I had a bit of both but um yeah I think the kind of clinical terminology you do pick up on it quite quickly I think when I first started in lectures I was a little bit not overwhelmed but it just kind of took me a bit of time to understand this terminology that kept popping up so I suppose if you kind of read a bit into the more clinical side of it um then that might help you just to kind of grasp things straight away it's kind of might be a little bit easier just to kind of pick up on what they're talking about um so clinical terminology was one thing that was kind of um I had to learn at the beginning but I didn't personally do loads and loads of preparation outside the recommended reading um you very much could learn as you went along and um and I didn't have a massive background in well, I did neuroscience but um obviously like neuroanatomy and kind of in relation to what we were learning um, I only had a very small amount of knowledge so um, I didn't do loads and loads of study and it was still absolutely fine um, I do think that they kind of cater to everyone so there's loads of different backgrounds on the course as well but um, yeah I think clinical terminology and then um, the recommended reading kind of covers what you need to know I think. Thanks, Morgan. So several of you are taking the programmes part time. Katie did hers part time and I know Charlotte and Bronte, you've mentioned it. So um, one of the questions, is it possible to undertake the course whilst working on the side part time? And do you have a work placement during the course? So just quickly, I'll say we don't have a work placement. I know there is a placement involved with the mental health programme. So maybe if we just start with, is it possible to work at the same time as study? Um, Charlotte? Are you working at the moment? Did you say? Yeah, yeah. So I work part time and do this part time. Term one is quite full on, but then it feels like it's petered off a little bit. Um, I also have three kids, and so it is possible to do the juggle. Um, but I think no matter which way you do it, I mean, it isn't a walk in the park. Um, but yeah, I mean, it is possible to do it, um, and have a job and study part time. Sorry, Tiffany, have you got your hand up? Yeah, hi, I just wanted to, um, I can talk about the placement a little bit. Um, and uh, for anyone who wants to do the master's full time and is thinking about working alongside, um, I didn't work alongside it and I found the master's took up all of my time. But I know friends who did the master's at the same time as me who did work um, and they just worked extremely hard over the years. So it... <laughs> I wouldn't recommend working alongside doing it full time, but I know people that have. Um, in terms of the placement, so I, at the moment, I coordinate the placements for the mental health pathway. Um, I won't be doing that next year, but um, for 
anyone on the master's course you can apply to do a placement they're voluntary they're not an assessed part of the course um, they're just an opportunity to get some extra experience um, they can either be a clinical placement so sometimes if it's a dementia related placement you might work in a memory service shadowing psychiatrists doing assessments yeah nick's one of our placement supervisors um, or working with people delivering cognitive stimulation therapy which is an intervention for people with dementia um, i did a research placement alongside my masters and um, i was really lucky with that it was um, de uh, delivering and testing an intervention for family carers that had been adapted to people from minority ethnic groups so i actually got to deliver the intervention to people do some follow-up assessments and do some interviews so there's a lot of kind of clinical and research experience from that um, if you want to do a placement you're usually expected to commit one day a week for the duration of the MSc. Um, yeah, I'm happy to answer more questions about placements if people have them. Morgan, did you have something to add? Yeah, so I worked part-time while doing the full-time masters. Um, I, I actually worked a lot. I, I shouldn't have worked as much as I did, I think, but um, it, yeah, I kind of found a job that gave me experience in the field that I was looking to go into while also working um, and doing the master's. So I think like I worked, for example, as like a healthcare assistant in a hospital, but I was just on the bank. So it was like a, I could work when I, cho when I chose to kind of basis. Um, and I worked as well as a resident advisor in student halls. So that kind of gave me a bit of a background in like mental health and mental health first aid and things like that. So I did find it more manageable. I think that's more because of my working patterns. So I would be kind of on call overnight, but that meant I wasn't having to juggle shifts um, or I could pick and choose when I worked. So I think it is doable to work while um, doing the master's full time. It's maybe just about finding the right kind of role and you know, maybe not something that requires a certain commitment, something that's kind of a bit more flexible. Thanks, Morgan. Jen, yeah, shall I take, there's, there's a yeah. next question is one about the mental health pathway. And yes, um, yeah, so basically uh, provided the timetable allows uh, and it, 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 you know, it, it make, makes sense um, in your, in your studies, you can, you can, uh, in the global, you could, you could do a module in the um, Centre for Global, global Health or, or anything else which is appropriate. Um, I think Chris is typing an answer about um, international student scholarship. So I'm sure he's bet, better place than me to answer that one. Yeah, there is a web page on UCL where you can search for scholarships as well. So have a Google for UCL kind of scholarship finder that might give you a clue. Attached to either of our programmes, we don't have full uh, scholarship covering everything, unfortunately, as much as we'd love to, wouldn't we, Nick? So... Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but you'd be have to look for alternative sources. I mean, it, it seems to be very country dependent. I mean, some some countries have quite extensive scholarship programs. Um, some don't have any. Uh, so just scrolling down the question, there's a question about the MSc Cognitive Neuroscience in UCL. Um, I think that's run by the Institute, the ICN Institute of Cognitive Neuroscience would make sense, which is based on Queen Square. Um, how is the programme related to MSc Dementia? Um, we don't have any overlap in teaching at all um, for our programme, and I don't think Nick does with his. Um, they're all quite um, separate. Um, what can you uh, reply from the admission teams? Um, it's It will be more than a fortnight and they have to do a, a lot of checks. And as the deadline is the end of March, um, things are getting a little bit busy there. So just hold on. Um, with our programme, we have a, a rolling basis. So each month we review the um, the um, the block of kind of applications that have come in and then you'll receive an offer or uh, sadly a rejection if you're very unfortunate um and but um sometimes there can be delays getting references in and, and processing at the graduate office so we'll try and get back to you as soon as we can i'd say give it at least eight weeks before you inquire with the program team and i yeah. don't know nick do you have any advice uh so i mean just, yeah so i mean just to say that the the reality is that it can be quite a long process before you hear, hear back and I, I know particularly last year there's some quite long delays and, and uh, uh, I mean just hang on uh, it will be processed it's just that um, 
you know that it, it does take time to go through the system uh, i know that's difficult because you may have other sort of applications in etc um but yeah uh, just don't be surprised if there's a bit of a delay i think it's important to emphasize yeah. that yeah and um chris is on the call who's our program administrator and feel free to drop him an email and it's on our program web pages if you have got a query with your application or want to know its status we can um we can let you know if it's been a considerable amount of time if there's a problem and we'll get in touch with you as well if there's a problem at our end so don't worry you will you will receive an answer just be a little bit patient thank you um so but, um, there's a related question whether we interview applicants. We don't. Nick, do you interview? No, not, no. not usually. I think we reserve the right to, but we, we, we haven't done in recent years. Yeah. So it, it's it's all down to your personal statement and um, your application documents. So um, write a good statement and um, let's see what we can do. Right. Um, who else is out there? There's a question from a medical student. Can they apply after they graduate? They need some work experience before they apply. Um, I think you can apply um, before you graduate. Um, it's just that we've got an application day deadline of March. So um, as with anything, you can have a conditional offer if you haven't um, completed. Um, but obviously, if you're planning to do something um, and you haven't done it yet, you can indicate that saying that you have a placement coming up. Um, but and which is more suitable pathway for a medical background? I mean, Nick, we've both had people from medical backgrounds. It really depends on what you'd like to focus on. Um, uh, Nick, that, that's what it. do you think? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly the same. It it really depends what your what your intentions are and and which way you're heading in um, uh, in your in your medical career. So e either. Maybe I'll ask Oliver, so um, which, which made, what made you choose the neuroscience pathway, maybe? I mean, it, it's difficult. Um, so I, I guess the, the main difference is, is the neuroscience one is more, has a greater neurologist perspective. And I guess the mental health one has a greater psychiatrist perspective. Um, so it just kind of depends on, on what you want to do in the future and your approach. Um, I think I personally wanted to learn more about the kind of bit more about the basic science and pathology of the dementias, um, which kind of swayed me a little bit more. But I, to be honest, I could have easily have gone either way. Um, yeah, so I, th I think it just really depends what you want to get out of it. Just have a read of the different kind of core modules. And even if you go with one and you think, actually, maybe I would have more wanted to do the other, you can kind of in your elective modules kind of choose more more ones from the other side and and um yeah get more of the other experience so i i i wouldn't kind of worry yourself too much about which one you end up doing because they they both sound great <laughs> we have thanks thanks oliver uh, we have two trainee psychiatrists on the course at, at the moment um, and, and and in the past i've, I've had quite a, a few psychiatry doctors come through um, there seems to be one remaining question around um, projects. Is this someone that's that's doing a project at the moment? Um, they've asked about process and application, so they must be applying still. So um, if you've applied in January, hopefully you'll hear very soon. Um, departments, there's... Um, there's, uh, we produce a list of available projects at the beginning of term, um, which in which the Queen's Neurology title and abstract, and you can scroll down the list of a hundred or so projects and apply to the um, projects that are open to all of our IOM, MSc, and MRS students. So there's a kind of an application process in that itself um, or you can approach um, yourself if there's someone that's not on the list hasn't offered a project um, you can approach individual researchers if it's in your field of interest and um, for like you mentioned genetic and genomic technologies and they they may not have been thinking about offering a project but they might be able to 
to. So you can always network. When do you, your students start thinking about projects? So, so yeah, I, I don't know whether that, that happened for other people, but Jen was breaking up a bit for me there. Oh, uh, sorry. But, 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 well, it's not your fault. Uh, from what I what I gathered, I think we have a very similar process in the division of psychiatry. So a list of projects gets um, published in the first term, uh, and then people are given the opportunity or encouraged to contact um, supervisors to discuss the projects in in more detail. But likewise, if you have a particular interest or a particular project in mind, you can sort of. Uh, uh, take the initiative and go and speak to someone and, and, and often a, a project can be developed in a bespoke way for, for you. Uh, and just to say um, that there's also a bit of genetics in, in the division of psychiatry. We have we have two professors of genetics and, and uh, um, an associate professor. And we have done some neuro, neuro uh, degeneration genetics as well. So you could, yeah, either, either institute. Yeah, there's lots of opportunities around um, the department and in fact some of our students have taken projects over at the division of psychiatry and and psych, um, students who are on the mental health pathway are welcome to apply for projects hosted by our um our supervisors so it's very flexible as to where you'd like to go for your projects as long as you're meeting the requirements of your program um i don't know someone has asked about they've uh, they've graduated in advanced zoology and biotechnology. Are they eligible for an um, MSc in dementia? Um, yes, yeah, so we will look at transcripts. Um, generally, if it's a biology um, background, um, you'd be eligible for the neuroscience pathway. And we have a look at different topics. And if, if we think that, yes, but maybe you're missing a bit of information, we might recommend you do a little bit extra reading over the summer to get you kind of up, up to speed or provide the, the reading lists. But yes, you'd be eligible for our programme. I'm not sure about cognitive neuroscience because I'm not involved in that programme at all. Um, thank you. Are there any other questions? As we've got only got a few more minutes left. Yeah, I don't know, Does do any of our students have any top tips for incoming students? It might be nice to, yeah. Morgan? Um, when you're choosing your dissertation, kind of make the most of it. So choose something that you think you're going to get the skills that you need for the future, if it's like a PhD or if it's clinical, like I chose something quite clinical. Um, so yeah, like once you hopefully go onto the course, um, just make sure to kind of Get your dissertation options in early and make the most of the opportunity for it's like a really good research opportunity like i value it so much and it helped me get my job so um yeah definitely like make the most of that when you can i just okay. want to add to that as well and say um I, i'm not sure how it is in on the neuroscience pathway but that lots of students on the mental health pathway publish their msc dissertations as well um so i was able to publish mine um yeah a, kind of a year a year after it was assessed as a um as a dissertation that's really good news yes not everything gets to publication but uh, well done um and katie um i was gonna say really make the most of the fact that it's so um interdisciplinary and in, in the in the sense that you have so many people coming from different backgrounds and when I did the masters, the group wasn't that big. It was like, it was quite nicely intimate, which meant um, we could make the most of having just like study sessions together and um, like bouncing ideas off each other because we were all coming from such different perspectives. Um, so I think that's something that I would really recommend making the most of, um, yeah. Yeah, it's been a little bit different experience this year with everyone starting online um, and we're trying to get the group together and then, um, but yeah, it's lovely when everyone can come together in the same room and share their ideas like with journal club and make it a group and learn from each other from different backgrounds. Was there any other tips you'd like to pass on? Bronte? I was just going to say on top of what's already been said, but tr really try and enjoy the assignments rather than focusing on what grade you're going to get more just think about what can you actually get out of it and use it as an opportunity to engage with the professors and the people that are in the department because it is really a really good opportunity and it doesn't matter too much on what grade you get or it's more about what you get out of the assignment so not to worry about that. 
Well, thank you everyone for taking part. Um, it's been great to hear all your experiences is all the lovely positive stories and for you to be able to pass on your knowledge to the next um, the next intake of students and help us um, work towards um, I, I don't know and um, working towards tackling the dementia challenge and Nick who would you like to say I know I'd just like to thank every everyone for, for contributing um, and and the audience for, for for listening to us and uh yeah and 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 you know absolutely we, there was no preparation for uh the students that um were allowed to say what they what what they felt so uh i, I was really pleasing to hear the kind of feedback so great thank you all for joining today